Welcome to chapter 4 that is control flow. So I'll be explaining the control flow statements in Python program. So there are a different control flow that we will be seeing in order to statement will be executed at the runtime. So there are conditional statement, transfer statement and iterative statements. When I am talking about conditional statement, we have if loop, if else loop or if else if else loop. Our transfer statements are break, continue and pass and then we have iterative as a for and while loops. So whenever uh, we talk about if loop, so there is an if condition and then statement or if condition and then n number of statements. So for example, if x equal to equal to to print something right this is one of the if loop otherwise you can also have print this print that or n number of statement right then the condition is true statement will be executed this is simple if loop now whenever there is an if else loop so it will be if x equal to equal to two do something right else do something else so in do you can do anything, you can print or you can do uh, any of the other operations. Similarly, uh, this will be an action two. So if condition is true, then action one. Otherwise, action two. Right? Otherwise, if else if no. So it will be first if condition, action one, else if condition, action two else condition action 3 and so on until last ends which will execute a default action so this is um, overall structure of if loop so it will be in a if condition if that condition is true we will execute a body otherwise we are coming out of it so one of the example is if both a and b are having same values so in first we are checking if b is greater than a this will be false because both are having same values and then second one we are checking if else if a equal to equal to b this will be true so this particular statement will be inspired here number one is five number two is six if number one is less than number two so that is true this particular statement will be executed right so you'll see this example first in our uh, jupyter notebook here we have an input function what this input function will do it will ask a user to enter something inside it right and this particular will be a message for a user and then whenever you are doing taking an input it will take input from user as a string so we need to convert it into integer so with typecasting using int you are converting it to integer and then you are performing certain operation this is an uh, we are checking if it is divided by two and remainder is zero that is even otherwise it is odd so this is basically just to check even and odd if I am giving 25 as input, it should give me output as odd number, right? So number is odd. Otherwise, if I am doing again, so if I am doing 28, this is even number, right? So number is even. So this is an if else loop. So this was an example with input function. You can just give our user whatever value you wanted to type inside it and then enter. So that value will be stored inside that particular identifier or a number, right? Now we have uh, iterative statement. If you wanted to execute a group of statement multiple times, then we should go for iterative statements. For that, we have for loops and while loops. So first syntax is for loop. How it start is for x in sequence colon and do something from body. So if you want to execute some action for every element present in the sequence, it may be uh, useful to use a for loop. Right, sequence can be anything string or any collection. So, for example, you are starting the loop until the last element is met. You are inside a body and performing operation on the next element. Once the last element is there, you are coming out of your execution. So, for example, we have a list with the values 1, 2, and 3. You are checking for value in list means for each element in list you can also do for example we have list equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. So now you are checking for each element in list colon and you are just printing the element right. So instead of value you can use element i or anything you wanted to use. So it will just take one value at a time 
and give you output as 1, 2, 3 and 4. Right? So, um, this way you will use for loop. For while loop, similar way you are just taking the condition while x is greater than 5. Print x. <coughs> and x equal to x plus 1. For example, this is an example. Until and unless x is less than 5, you are doing this operation. Once x is equal to or greater than 5, you are coming out of your loop. So, uh, once the condition is true, body will be executed. Once the condition is false, you are coming out of your uh, execution. Right? So, we will see the example over here. So, this is the expenses of the month and you wanted to calculate the addition of them. So, what you will do? You will take a sum or a total as one of the variable and you will iterate over all these elements of this list and then add them to this total so for item in this expenses that means first item is this second is this and so on you are just adding that item to total so every time this will be added to zero first and then it will be two three four zero then two three four zero plus next item then all this addition plus next item and so on until and unless total is printed so your total will be this much for this month right so in while loop similar way i is 1 you are defined and then you are telling once the i is less than 5 or equal to 5 print i and increase the value of i so for loop will have inbuilt counter with it you do not need to specify in the next value but here you need to do this increment operation inside while loop so that if we meet to this particular logic once it is meet it will come out of the loop so once it is equal to or less than 5 it is printing once it is 5 or greater than 5 it is coming out of your flying right so these are nothing but the iterative state now we uh, we are talking about transfer statement we have two statements break and continue so what uh, is the use of break for example you are inside a loop uh, you are checking something from this list um, here you have an example of garage, living room, chair and closet. These are the four values inside your list. Now you are checking whenever your input, whatever the user is providing is matching to XYZ value. Here in this case, we are matching with chair. It should come out of your loop. It should not go until the last element to check one by one. Um, that is the example of break. So for example, uh, whenever I equal to equal to key location. What is key location? Chair. And what is I? First time it will be garage, second time it will be in, third time it will be chair. So third time when chair is matched with chair, it will say key is found in particular location. And it will not go until and check the closet. Because already we got an output, we are breaking the slope. So that is the break statement. So now continue statement, we can use the continuous statement to skip the current iteration. For example, you have the values from 1 to 8. So what is the range function in Python? It will give you values in between this range, starting with 0 and ending with 8 minus 1, that is 7. So it will print output or give the values from 0 to 7. If I am doing a range of 1 to 8 means, it will start with 1 and it will end with 7. So all the values in between the was will be given by this range function. So here I am just taking for i in range 1 to 8 where i mod 2 equal to equal to 0 continue whenever it is divided by 2 that means whenever it is an even number continue do not do anything whenever it is an odd number do multiplication i into i first one will be 1 into 1 1 then 2 is skip third one will be 3 into 3 then 5 into 5 and so on until 7 into 7 right so this way you can use a continue statement and last one is pass statement Whenever you just wanted to define some class or an object, maybe um, X, Y, Z, but you do not know the operations to be defi defined inside that class or an object, uh, that moment you can just write pass and that definition will be completed and you can move to the next block of your code. Right? So that way we are using a transport segments. So this is an already example that I have given. Key is not found in garage, not found in living room, but is found in chair so here it is matched so it is not going towards the last similar way continuous statements we have seen and past statements we have seen this is an example of range 100 values whenever it is divided by 9 you are printing otherwise passing so all the 9 parameters are getting outputted 
right so this was it about our um, python control flow statements uh, thank you see you in the next chapter